today I'm going to be swapping plugs in this 2012 uh, GLK 350. That's an X204 uh, M272. I'm going to try some off-brand plugs just to see how they work out. These are uh, double platinum. You can see. Uh, I'm going to check them and give them a long-term uh, test to see if I'm inducing problems or fixing problems. And the first step before I start installing anything is to check the gap. Uh, I always recommend you do this. Uh, some, uh, particularly double platinum plugs, will tell you not to check the gap, or at least not to set it, but I always recommend set, uh, checking it. Now you can see how this is a double platinum tip. Uh, the both electrodes have a little uh, little nub where the special metal is located, and I'm going to okay. These are these basic basically based on the plugs these replace. They should be gapped at 0.032 inches, uh, which is also 0.8 millimeters. Now. Um, I'm, I can see right now that it is narrower than that. And if you look close, you can see that that electrode is not absolutely square to the body of the plug, meaning that even though it shipped with a protective sleeve on it that should prevent anything from happening to it in transit, this plug was not gapped correctly. Um, it is considerably more than 0.32 inches, 0.8 millimeters. Uh, so, one out of six is not good. Uh, I will check the others and let you know what I find. Well, consistency does count for something, and at least they're all the same. They all measure point, uh, 0.026 to 0.028 inches which is significantly smaller than the uh, prescribed gap so now even though these are not really gappable plugs I'm going to work out a method to regap them to the proper 0.032 inch slash 0.8 millimeter gap uh, not what you should have to do for a new set of uh, double iridium plugs okay so I take this one and you can see the gap is, uh, if I put it in front of the camera, you can see the gap is about 0 .2, 0 0.026 inches. Um, the uh, ground tab metal is not particularly thick, and if you watch very closely, I can open it up by very carefully bending it out, taking care not to touch the uh, the center pin uh, that's on the uh, the anode I think it's the anode um, so now that I bent it out I'm going to recheck it and you can see I've opened it up to about 0 .3 uh, 37 so a little bit too far so the next step caveman that I am is to do that and that's taking it down to about 0 .3 and I'll tap it a little more and that's right about 0.032 so I got a rinse and repeat time six okay a few very fiddly minutes later uh, they are all uh, they are all regapped to the proper gap and next I need to start removing plastic uh, Starting with the front cosmetic panel, uh, I need to pull the um, these very very fragile uh, air inlet tubes off the front of the uh, front of the motor like so. Twist them loose, and these are the you can see this one is absolutely falling apart that's kind of their normal state unfortunately um, they will be an item you end up replacing pretty regularly on this particular car I'm hoping I can patch that together at least long enough for temporary use and same with the other side pull it up off the clip 
twist the back side, pull it off, and again, not too good. Uh, this top cover comes off, you release it back here, and after that, it's just a matter of, you want to release this hose, you don't have to take it all the way off, um, just pull it kind of straight up and out, and then you have your air filters uh, in here, in these two compartments, but that's not what we're after today. And now you can see we have excellent access to the spark plugs, or to the coils at any rate, uh, which have to obviously come out to get to the plugs. So um, not all Mercedes V6s are created equal in that respect. Some are a little bit fiddly. So uh, next trick is to pull the coils to get access to the plugs. Okay, they are held on with T30 bolts, uh, two each. It should be easy enough to get off. And once those are out, uh, just a matter of pulling the coils out and check for check for oil around the bottom. That would mean that the seal inside the valve cover has failed. Uh, you don't really need to label these because they're not going to go far enough from their home to get confused about which which hole they go in. Uh, so they should pull out. Don't get crazy. They are they are sticky enough that they, they give you a little resistance, but now have access to the plugs and all I need is a uh, appropriate spark plug tool. Okay, removal. Uh, you can use a tool like this for removal. I wouldn't suggest it for installation. And as it turns out, I'm gonna need to use a ratchet anyway. Uh, very often a torque wrench, a uh, impact wrench with a lot of uh, extensions on it doesn't really work very well and wow that's been in there a while that's probably why it didn't work very well these are good and tight this is a hundred and fifty nine thousand mile car uh, so perhaps these haven't been changed yet I should know here in just a minute But yes, that's uh, that's a little nasty looking. Uh, I mean, it looks like it's burning okay, but that's been in there for far too long. So I suspect they're all going to be a little more difficult to get out. Uh, yeah, that's what happens when you DIY and buy a car uh, basically from the random person on the street. And here's one of the typical plugs. They've burned open to about 0 0.035, 0 0.036. Uh, and significantly, they got the TriStar on them. That means that these are probably the original plugs that have lasted for well over 150,000 miles. Folks, I don't recommend this. Uh, they really should be changed out. Worst case, 100,000 miles, but I like to change them out uh, between 50 and 75,000 because plugs are cheap gas is expensive and any little advantage you get is going to pay off in no time. My next trick, I'm going to put a little dab of anti-seize on these plugs. Um, I do not want to be grunting and groaning to remove them next time should I uh, keep, well, actually this car is going to my son, but if he keeps it long enough to need plugs, I don't want him to have to grunt and groan. So this is how you fix that. And you just need a little, just a little schmear around the first 
threads that will come in contact. Uh, try not to get it down inside the plug. And a little bit going down just so that as you're putting it in, there's a little bit of fresh getting on the uh, threads. So that's way more than is necessary and will keep these uh, easy to get in, easy to get out in the future. All right, now install the plugs. Uh, again, you need a spark plug wrench because, or a spark plug socket because you notice they don't fall out. If you use a regular uh, just extension socket, uh, when you tip it down, the plug is going to take a runner. It may fall into the bottom of your engine compartment. You have to pull your splash shield. You don't want to do that. So carefully insert it. Uh, let it feel around for the hole. And install it. It should just go in finger tight until it's snug. Which is right about... There. Okay. And do the same for the next uh, five plugs. All the spark plugs are carefully threaded in, uh, again by hand, making sure you don't cross thread them. You do not want to cross thread a spark plug. It gets really ugly really fast. The next step is to use a torque wrench. Now I, for spark plugs, I kind of prefer my old school beam style wrench. You can certainly use a click style uh, torque wrench. They work on the same principle. This, what I like about this one is I can see the torque as I'm as I'm tightening it down, you can actually see the torque coming on, and you can you just get a better feel for what's going on down there, and you cannot be too careful with spark plugs. So basically, uh, the spec that I was seeing is that uh, Mercedes apparently calls for about 15 to 20, give or take, uh, foot pounds, which sounds about right. NGK, the spark plug manufacturer, calls for like 10 to about 15 uh, I figure pretty much just go with um, the low end so I'm going to shoot for 15 foot-pounds that's going to be plenty um, and again I don't know if uh, I can get this in frame or not but I'm going to try to uh, pull it down as I tighten it you can see the uh, okay in this case, I got to take it off and rotate it 90 degrees. Um, and it's crushing the washer. So what's happening is the torque is not going much of anywhere while it's doing the crush washer thing. But that's nice and snug. That's about 15 pounds. And I'm just going to do it on the rest of them now. I should add that the spec on your engine or your spark plugs could be different. So by all means, look it up before you start this job. Know what the spec is that you're going to use. Get a torque wrench and use that spec. It's very important. You can't be too careful with this stuff because the, uh, the alternative is a whole lot of expensive machine shop work. And it's time to put the spark plug coils back on. Uh, examine the uh, circumference and the ends. Uh, they should have a little silicone grease left in there. You can add some. That's a very good thing to do. Uh, in this case, um, it's the bores that they go into look clean. This has been an Arizona, California car. It has not been subjected to salt and all the normal nonsense. So they're actually very clean, still very, uh, looks like they're ready to go back in. So I'm not going to worry about it. Uh, again, make sure that you've got the, the plug, and the plug gets into the tube when you insert it. Uh, again, it's got little ribs that make it kind of hard to miss, but then just slide them all into place and start 
Reassembling the bolts. Now you can you can add a little um, you can add a little bit of grease if you like to the bolts to make sure they come out fine, but uh, probably overkill. Uh, I think I will put a tiny bit of anti seize or, or grease on them though, just for future joy. I guess it should go without saying that you really don't want to torque down those coil bolts too hard. You know, I used a, a screwdriver type tool. That's appropriate. You just want to go past snug. If you're using a ratchet, which is fine, just go to snug and just a tiny bit more. All it has to do is hold the coil in place, which is easy peasy. So now we've got all six plugs out, replaced, and... Now comes the payoff moment, the moment of truth, uh, whenever I hit the key and see what happens. Sounds like a sewing machine. I'd call it job well done. <laughs>